you today. Have you ever wondered what it's like to be a veterinarian? Well, my guest today is one of the leading veterinarians here in the city of Charlotte, and he even works on exotic animals. But we'll get back to that later. I wanted to introduce you to my guest, Dr. Mac. Thank Hi there. you for joining me today, Dr. Mac. Thank you. Thank I you am for having me. So glad you're here because I have often wondered what it takes to be a veterinarian. But you know, before I get to my questions about that, let's start out with the first question. What is a veterinarian? A veterinarian is a, a, a doctor that takes care of all types of animals. All right. Hmm. Now, you got different types of veterinarians. I'm a small animal veterinarian. Uh -huh. so that means I take care of dog, dogs and cats. Uh -huh. All right. You have large animal veterinarians that take care of horses and cows. Then ah. you can have um, basically avian, we have avian veterinarians that take care of birds. Oh, really? Yep. Uh, matter of fact, we have veterinarians that specialize that take care of like um, only eyes, veterinary ophthalmologists. We have huh. veterinary surgeons, veterinary internal medicine. We even have veterinary neurologists, you know. Wow, just like a human doctor, like huh? A human doctor, yeah. Ah, so in order to become a veterinarian, how long do you have to go to school? Well, nowadays you have to go four years of college, mm -hmm. then four years of veterinary school. Uh -huh. And it's different than human medicine, because after four years of veterinary school, you can actually take a national test and then go out and practice veterinary medicine. In human hmm. medicine, you have to do an internship, and then basically a lot of those guys specialize. So we can just become general practitioners like I am myself uh -huh. after four years of veterinary school. But I did an internship at the University of Tennessee. Now in my opening I said that you were one of the leading veterinarians in Charlotte. How did you get your start? Well, when I graduated in 1987 from Tuskegee University in Tuskegee, Alabama, uh -huh. I did an internship uh, at the University of Tennessee and then I was hired at Freedom Animal Hospital uh, here in Charlotte on Freedom Drive mm. as uh, I think I was the first African American veterinarian to come to Charlotte. Oh really? Back in 1988, yes. And so what do you specialize in? Well, mainly small animal, uh -huh. but I have a special interest in exotics, and exotics include snakes, okay. iguanas, birds, you know, and what we call pocket pets, which would be rabbits, hamsters, gerbils, uh -huh. guinea pigs, uh -huh. this sort of thing. You mentioned that you worked at the office on Freedom Drive. What else do you do? Well, I work part-time also at uh, PetSmart, mm -hmm. but I do a lot of work <clears throat> around the city. I do a lot of pro bono work. You know, I take hmm. care of a lot of the Charlotte Mecklenburg school system pocket pets, which would be, you know, classroom gin guinea pigs, classroom rabbits, uh -huh. you know, hamsters and gerbils. Um, I do the work for the Discovery Place. You know, that's kind of declining because they basically um, don't have as many animals as they oh, used really? to have. Oh, yeah. mm. really? So if a person is thinking about becoming a vet, would you suggest or guide them to be one? Is well, it a good a, field? Oh, yes, yes, yes. It's a very varied field. You know, veterinarians, uh, you know, uh, inspect the, the public meat. Uh huh. You know, there's veterinarians that take care of in the Army. Uh huh. You know, Army, uh, the armed forces, you know, to basically inspect the meat that the soldiers have to eat. Oh. We have uh, veterinarians that work in lab animal, which basically, when they test drugs on different animals, the veterinarians have to oversee these. Um, projects. Mm -hmm. um, you have zoo veterinarians mm -hmm. that, you know, of course, take care of all the exotic yeah. animals at the zoo. And that's what most people think when you say exotic. They think lions, tigers, and bears. Oh, my. But actually, yeah, right. <laughs> but actually when we, we refer to exotic animals in veterinary medicine, we mm -hmm. think of, you know, snakes, reptiles, monkeys, this sort of thing that you don't normally see in a mm -hmm. small animal practice. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to take a short break because I have a lot of questions to ask you about what people should look for when they're looking for a vet, okay? Okay. All right. Any questions? Uh, what kind of service plan does this come with? Unlimited. Can I keep my same phone number? Absolutely. How do I change the ringtone? Just hook it up to your computer. Does it have a camera? What's the warranty? Does it come in silver? Can I put my party shuffle on this? Does it have a 3.5 millimeter headset jack? You sell a lot of these? It's the one I carry. You ever get those phantom vibrations in your pocket? Any questions? No. Are you sure? Yeah. Ask questions. For the 10 questions everyone should know, go to AHRQ.gov. Coming home can be hard if you're a veteran of Iraq or Afghanistan. You may feel like you're all alone, but you're not alone. At IAVA.org, your fellow vets are all around you. Join 
Join our free online community, get the resources you need, and connect to other vets who know where you're coming from. IAVA.org. We've got your back. Hey. Ready to go? Yeah, but the fire's not out. Close enough. Huh. Close enough? If it's too hot to touch, it's too hot to leave. I mean, the next thing you know, you've torched our whole neighborhood. Which is why we're not going anywhere? Exactly. Nine out of ten wildfires are caused by humans. Only you can prevent wildfires. And welcome back to Betty. I'm your host, Cynthia Thompson. I'm here with Dr. Mack. Now, Dr. Mack, before we took our break, I said I want to ask you about what should people look for when they're looking for a vet? Well, one of the things you want to, you know, most people, 80% study has shown 80% of the people that go to a veterinarian, they go through one that's close to them. Uh-huh. You know, and um, so you want to find a veterinarian that, you know, you're comfortable with, you know, close to your home, that you can get to, get to the hospital um, very quickly if you have an emergency. Mm -hmm. Most cities have an emergency clinic that basically open up after hours. Oh, really? Yeah, after hours. We have 24-hour emergency clinics. Matter of fact, we have three of them here in Charlotte. Mm -hmm. You know, so after 6 o'clock when I go home, you know, if you call my hospital, the answering machine will divert you to one of these emergency clinics. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you want a veterinarian that's personable, you know, that really, really, really understands your, your relationship with your pet, mm -hmm. be it a dog, a cat, a bird. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I have numerous clients that have ferrets as pets, mm -hmm. you know, so you have to find somebody that's knowledgeable with, you know, with uh, ferret medicine. Mm -hmm. You know, so you also want to find a veterinarian whose staff is mm -hmm. cordial, you know, you know, welcoming and warm, mm -hmm. you know, and especially a, a hospital that's going to treat your, your pet yeah. like part of the family. And that's the way veterinary medicine has mm -hmm. gone nowadays. Mm -hmm. You know, these, these animals are not just animals. Mm -hmm. I mean, nowadays, most of them have people names, George, Michael. I mean, that's these dogs' names. It's not, no, no longer Fido and rough. Uh-huh. You know? <laughs> yeah, my little dog name is Samson. Yeah, see? see you know? <laughs> so, yeah, so, it's, so I mean, you, you'll get a good feel because, mm -hmm. you know, uh, most veterinarians, we, we love animals. Uh-huh. Ninety percent of us went into veterinary medicine because we loved animals. Uh-huh. We wanted to help animals. So, so that brings up another question. Do you have a pet at home? I have a Labrador and a bird. Uh-huh. a bird, a Quaker parrot. Oh. Uh, and a nine-year-old yellow lab. And speaking of domestic animals, if a person came to you and asked you, I want to get a pet, but I don't know which kind, what advice would you give that person? Well, several things. First of all, you got to ask, is a dog going to be indoors or outdoors? Uh-huh. Big or little? Uh-huh. Okay. Shedding or non-shedding? Uh-huh. You know, because if it's going to be indoors, you basically not want a dog that sheds mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and then, you know, the, 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 the temperament, you know. I mean, if you want a guard dog, of course, most people go with something big, uh -huh. Doberman, Rottweiler, German Shepherd. You know, if you want one of those foo-foo dogs, you know, that you want to hold, you know, you go to a Yorkie or Maltese, yeah. you know, something small like that. Uh -huh. You know, so it's, it just all depends on what you're looking for. If you have uh -huh. kids, you want something that's going to be friendly with kids, like a uh -huh. Labrador. Uh -huh. You know, if you want, like I said, if, you, if you're just a single person and you just want something to... Um, uh, uh, that you can bond with cocker spaniels or you know one people dogs. Uh -huh. You know, so it just it's a wide variety. So uh -huh. depending on what you look for, we uh -huh. we can place you with a dog. Uh -huh. Now you mentioned dogs. What about cats or birds or rabbits or hamsters? Well, you know, usually those pocket pets, as we call, uh -huh. you know, usually for kids. Most uh -huh. parents get it for their children. You know, I, you know, I want a gerbil. Most people start off with a gerbil uh -huh. to give a kid responsibility. Uh -huh. You know, clean up after the cage and feed the animal, this sort of thing. Uh, but um, uh, with cats, you know, you just got to be a cat person. Yeah. Not anybody's just going to crop there and get a cat. You mm. just got to want a cat. Mm -hmm. You know, cats are very, very different than dogs. Uh -huh. They're very independent, you know, but they have a lot of different breeds of cats, too, uh -huh. that can fit a person's personality. Uh -huh. You know, like a Siamese is very, very vocal. They're very, very loving. They just meow all the time. They just uh -huh. want attention. Uh -huh. Then there's other cats just, you know, just leave me alone. <laughs> you know, just leave me alone. You know, just make sure the food is there and my litter box is clean. That's it. <laughs> so I want to ask you this next question, and it's kind of a touchy subject. How do you feel about vets um, docking tails, pinning back ears? Do you agree with that practice? Well, you know, that's... To me, my personal opinion is, 
you know, it, that's a cosmetic procedure. Uh huh. You know, and you know, in Europe, you cannot do that. It's against the law. Oh, really? It. You can't do it in Europe. It's it's, a, um, it's illegal to dock a tail, clip your ear, um, take off a, a, a thumb. You know, this sort of thing. Take off a thumb? Like they, you have five dogs have five digits. Uh huh. Like we do. Uh huh. And sometimes that thumb digit gets caught up in the carpet, so <gasps> when they're young, they're removed. You see this done in labs, Rottweilers, Dobermans. You know, um, any dog that usually needs a tail docked at an early age. Uh huh. You know, it's a cosmetic procedure. A, the AKC, a lot of these things are just breed standards, uh -huh. and we're just comfortable with looking at it. But nowadays, with the um, the advancement in anesthesia and sedatives, uh -huh. you know, these animals don't feel this. So it's it's just a matter of opinion. You know, so you know, it's 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 probably it's very it's. It's debatable, uh -huh. you know. It's it's out there, and, and the different veterinary uh, organizations, you know, it's on the table, of you know, um, is this you know humane or painful, this sort of thing. But personally, you know, it's just like if you're gonna get your eyebrows plucked, you know, mm -hmm. or, you know, you want to, you know, a little tummy tuck or. You know, get your get your crow's nest, whatever. You know. <laughs> so it's just cosmetic. It's strictly cosmetic. And like I tell you, we got the dogs don't feel anything, uh -huh. and they don't wake up and look in the mirror and go, "Oh my God, where's my tail?" <laughs> you know, I mean, Are you sure? I promise you, we don't have too many behavior problems related, unless the procedure was not you know got complications. Oh really? You know, yeah. yeah. But usually, it's, it's when they do it when they're three days old. It's like, you know, um, it's just it's just minor. It's just a minor uh -huh. procedure. They don't remember it. Uh -huh. Since we're talking about domestic pets, why is it important to get pets the rabies shot? <clears throat> because rabies is transmitted, to, can be transmitted to humans. It's a, oh. a, a warm-blooded type of virus okay. Okay, for mammals. Uh -huh. So raccoons, foxes, skunks, you know, horses, cows, all these animals uh -huh. can get the rabies and transmit it to people. And there's not too many documented cases of once you contract rabies, it's, it's a goner. So it's a oh, public really? health thing. Oh. So it's, that's why it's a law that all animals have to be vaccinated for rabies to protect the public. So our animals get it from the animals outside? Right, right. If, you're, if your dog is not vaccinated against rabies, and let's say a rabbit raccoon bit your dog, mm -hmm. in 10 days your dog would liable to come down with rabies. Well, if your dog, the saliva is passed through saliva, mm -hmm. and if your dog bit you or, you know, you had an open cut, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and it's rare. It's rare in this country, but in third world countries, a lot of people die from rabies. So is there a problem with rabies with non-domesticated animals? Yes, we, we've seen more and more of it in oh, the really? population. Yeah, more raccoons, more foxes. As we expand society and, you know, the, the urban area uh -huh. reaches out to the, these, these animals' um, environment, the, we're getting more exposed to these animals, these type of animals. Oh. You know, right here in Charlotte, you know, it's, you know, it's coyotes and and, and, and foxes running around, uh -huh. and these animals, skunks, raccoons, you know. There's skunks in Charlotte? Oh yeah, oh yeah, I'm sure you can find some in the outskirts of Charlotte coming in. I mean, you gotta remember Charlotte, you got Belmont, you got Gastonia, you got these country areas outlying Charlotte. Uh -huh. You know, these animals come in looking for something to eat. Hmm, I wanna ask you another thing about a domestic animal that I've always wondered about. The tick, uh, the flea and tick medications that we had to give our indoor pets. Mm -hmm. Do we have to do that in the winter time? Well, uh, you know, it's February the 1st, 65 degrees today in Charlotte. Yeah, <laughs> nice you day. Me? Nice day. <laughs> right, that's why we recommend it year round. Um. Okay, we recommend it year, year round because, I mean, when these temperatures get like this, you know, your animals, you know, your pet goes out in the, the grass and the uh -huh. woods, you know, it's, and it's, it's like anything else, it's preventive medicine. Mm -hmm. You're going to prevent the animal from getting a disease from a tick or a flea. So how often should we put on that flea medication, the it's liquid? Just, most of it's once a month. Okay. Most of it's once a month. So is it as good as the flea collar? Oh, it's better. Oh, it is? Yeah, yeah. flea collars just are not as, uh, they don't work as well, mm -hmm. okay? And it's just, it's, you know, it's, it helps but it's not going to keep your, mm -hmm. your a flea a flea or a tick off of you. Mm -hmm. You have to use these systemic products. Mm -hmm. Some things you put on the, the back of the neck and it absorbs throughout the body. So uh -huh. as these ticks and fleas get on them, they die. Uh huh. Yeah. So a collar's not going to do that. 
So if we don't put on the flea medication, what happens? Well, if you, your animal ha uh, is allergic to fleas, you're going to have skin problems. They're going to start itching and scratching. It's just like if you start scratching your skin, you're going to cut your skin. Then it's going to get infected, and one thing leads to another. Uh -huh. Then you come to see me. So do they cause heartworm? That's what no, I've no. always heard. Okay, no. What causes heartworms is a totally different. That's a mosquito. Oh. A mosquito causes heartworms. And so basically what happens is a mosquito bites a dog that has heartworms. And a mosquito, what they do, they eat blood. Uh -huh. That's how they survive. So when they suck up blood from a heartworm dog, they suck up, suck up a microscopic worm. Uh -huh. So when they go to a dog that's not on heartworm preventative, they inject this worm. Okay, this worm makes its way in about six months to the right side of the heart. Uh -huh. Okay, and it grows up, and that's how they get heartworms through a mosquito. So that's why we strongly recommend, especially here in the South, that your animal is on heartworm preventative, ah. which is different than flea preventative, okay. which is different than tick preventative. Okay. So those are the three main parasites that you have to worry about uh -huh. externally. I mean, uh -huh. you know, as far as you know, mosquitoes, ticks, and fleas. Internally, there's all types of worms that dogs get. Oh, really? Yes. How? Well, some of them are transmitted from the mother. Okay, mm -hmm. other ones they pick up, you know, in the yard. Or when you take a dog out to walk, you notice the first thing he does is smell other dog's yes. droppings. Well, they basically can inhale the eggs, swallow the eggs, the eggs go through the intestines, grow up to be worms. And that's how it's transmitted. Huh, I did not even know that. Yes. That's why it's good to have, take the dog to the vet twice a year. Yeah. It's like people. Uh huh. You know, nowadays, you know, twice a year. The doctor wants to see you twice a year. Mm -hmm. So if something is wrong, we can cure it before it becomes a major problem. Uh huh. So if your dog, let's say your dog has worms at three months old, uh -huh. right? A bad worm. And if he never goes to the vet, when he comes in at three years old, sick, he don't have this for two and a half years. You know, look at the damage that it's done to his liver, his kidneys, his intestines, yeah. and his overall, his overall well being. Uh huh. So that's why it's very, very you know, um, uh, wise to, you know, put your dog on these preventatives. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a funny question for you. Don't laugh, okay? I try not to. If it's that funny, <laughs> I'm going to laugh. <laughs> Dogs, birds, cats, rabbits, hamsters, they cannot talk. So yeah. how do you know what's wrong with them? Well, well you know, they can that's, tell that's you. A, no, that's a, like, that's, a great, that's a good question. That's a good question. But believe it or not, different dogs have different characteristics. Uh huh. Most dogs have like basically four or five different types of behavior, attitudes, what we call. Some uh -huh. of them are fearful. Some of them are shy. Some of them are very, very aggressive. Some of them are just loving. Uh -huh. Some of them just warm and just you know just all over the place. Uh huh. You know, so usually you know uh, uh, you know when they're sick. It's like, they're just like us. You don't want to eat. Uh -huh. When a dog does not want to eat, that's a sign that something's wrong. Uh -huh. You know, and then you just got to find out. You know, we have a system. We go through a system. It's like if you went to your doctor, you know, you just say, for instance, you said that, you know, you was coughing. You just kept coughing. Well, you know, coughing would, would make the assumption that it has something to do with, in, with your throat or your respiratory system. Mm -hmm. So we have a process that we go through to rule out this, 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 and this mm -hmm. to get to the problem. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times we really prefer you not to talk. So that's why we like <laughs> working for animals because when people talk, they tell you more information than you want to hear. <laughs> so we can figure it out on our own. <laughs> Sometimes we don't want you to talk. <laughs> Sometimes I wish the dog could talk. He'd probably say, I want a new owner. <laughs> I'm tired of being outside in this cold. That's why I'm coughing. <laughs> so what do you do if you find an animal that you feel like is being mistreated, like you just well, said? Well, nowadays we can report it. Uh-huh. Okay. Matter of fact, the law requires, let's say, for instance, um, you go to the emergency room with a bite. Uh-huh. And you say, my neighbor's dog bit me. That has to be reported. The physician has to report it to animal control. And animal control goes out to the, the uh, offending dog's residence to make sure the dog is up to date on his rabies shot. Uh huh. So yes, so it's it's measures in place, you know, for abuse, uh, for neglect, you know. Uh, recently, you know, you hear all about these puppy meals and these people that yeah. hold animals. Yeah, yeah. And uh, 60 and 70 dogs and, you know, an area just as big as this room where we're filming this, uh, this talk. Mm hmm so mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's measures in place. Mm -hmm. I mean, nowadays, we're, we're, really, we are so advanced, mm -hmm. you know, that it's, it's unbelievable. And then, you know, uh, with the internet and 
cell phones and video cameras. You know, yeah. everybody, everybody's watching everybody. There's no privacy I mean, now. You, you can't even look at your dog the wrong way with somebody uh -huh. going, uh-huh, uh -huh. I see the way you're looking at him. <laughs> yeah, you're abusing that dog. You are abusing that dog. <laughs> You know, we had the dog parks here in Charlotte. Do you think that's a good idea to have all those dogs running around? Well, basically, you know, yes, because dogs are social animals. But mm -hmm. at the same time, it's just like anything else. When we have all them people downtown for the 4th of July, mm -hmm. somebody going to act up. <laughs> just like in the dog park. <laughs> Somebody's dog going to act up. <laughs> but we shouldn't stop the dog park for one idiot dog. <laughs> One dog whose parent didn't train him like he should have been trained. <laughs> I want to ask you one more question about the dogs. Okay. Is it a good idea to crate them in the house all day? Well, starting off as a puppy, okay? Okay. That's highly recommended for most um, veterinary organizations. Mm -hmm. And the reason being is because you have to train this animal mm -hmm. to use the bathroom in one area. You mm -hmm. can't have them. You know, I tell people, I tell my clients all the time, what do you do with your newborn baby when it's just nine months old and just started walking, where do you put this baby while you're taking a shower? Mm -hmm. You put him in the playpen. Right. Now, you don't leave him in the playpen all day, but you're going to leave him in that playpen until you finish taking a shower, getting ready to go to work. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then you take the baby and you take him to daycare. Uh-huh. Well, where is he? He's in daycare. He's in uh -huh. a room. He's in uh -huh. a closed room. He doesn't have the whole daycare. He's got that room. Well, that's what we see a crate as. It's just his area at that point in time, all right, because he doesn't need uh, intellectual stimulation. You leave a baby alone for a while, he's going to get boy, he's going to get into stuff. You want to teach the baby to learn because his uh -huh. brain is constantly developing. Mm -hmm. But his dog's brain is only going to go so far. So most dogs, when they set up video cameras and the people leave the house, even if the dog has the whole house, the dog usually stays in one room, mm -hmm. chilling, until the owner gets home. Mm -hmm. It's not like he's going around the room, going to the kitchen, going, well, ain't nothing to do here. They go in the living room. No, nope, ain't nothing to do here. Go mm -hmm. upstairs. Mm -hmm. you know, let me find something to do. No, mm -hmm. he's just going to wait till the owner gets home to interact with the owner. Mm -hmm. So crate training is, a, is a, a proven method to train your dog. Mm -hmm. You know, I know I've asked a lot of questions about dogs because I'm a dog owner. Right. But do you have any other um, comments you like to make about the other domestic pets well, usually, before we close? Yeah, usually, I mean, it's cats. And cats are just so independent. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, when they say cats, they have nine lives. It's true. Because cats usually are hardy, they, they you know they don't need much, they don't whine like dogs, you know they just they take an injury, they take a lump and a bump and move on, and go mm -hmm. on about their business, mm -hmm. you know. So when a cat gets sick, it's usually sick. Mm -hmm. There's something usually wrong with it. That's why they say they have nine lives, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other pets, you know, ferrets and birds, you know, they you know like anything else. When they get sick, they come to the vet, uh -huh. you know. So it's but mo most animal hospitals probably more than 60 to 70 percent of their patients are dogs. Ah. Yeah. And at our hospital, 65 percent dogs, 30 percent cats, and another 5 percent these exotics. Mm -hmm. Another stupid question, a yeah. funny question that popped in my head. Do you treat fish? I had one fish <laughs> in 24 years come to my office. This is a true story. The lady calls on the phone and said, do you treat fish? I said, so, no ma'am. She said, well, I would like to bring my fish in. I said, well, if you bring the fish in, it's going to be 20, back in 19, about 1989. So the office visit was $25. Uh -huh. She said, uh, I want, because I want you to tell me if his eye is out. And I said, Ooh. eye is out. I said, all right, bring him in. You know, it'd be $25. She brought it in. Sure enough, the fish eye was hanging out. What happened was the fish tried to squeeze through something they had in the tank and knocked his eye out. Uh -huh. You know, and I said, well, his eye is out, $25. And, <laughs> and it just fell out. And this, the fish did fine. But that's, that's the only fish I've seen in 24 oh, years. Oh, really? <laughs> but thank you so much for joining me today, Dr. Matt. I had a really good time. You got to come back because I, I didn't get to all my questions. We will. I okay? Will that's a promise. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me here on The Better You. And please continue to watch every Wednesday night at 6 p.m. Thank you for coming. Mm -hmm.